Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to part 5 of my Creating a Hacker News, Clone and Vue.js series. As always, the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll be leaving a link to this in the description below. Now, in the previous tutorial, we looked at how we could show all of the latest hacker news stories within our homepage component and we showed information like the score and the URL of that story. Now, whilst this is pretty cool, it doesn't let us see the discussion going on around any of these stories and as we all know, that can really be the best bit. So in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a new route to our Vue.js application, which will also be able to render an individual story and all of the top level comments associated with it. Let's jump back into Visual Studio Code. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is to create this new component that will be rendering whenever they hit this new single route. So right click on the components file and click new file and then type in single.view like so. Again, we're gonna be creating the three tags, so template, script, and style. Take that out and we give that a scoped attribute. And then within this, we want to do a simple div and a h2 tag saying my single root. Finally, within our export default block, we want to say the name is equal to single. Now that we've got this single component, we need to update our view router so that it has a root for this single component. So click on router and index.js. Now within your roots array, you're going to want to create a new JSON object with a path. And we're going to call this slash story slash colon ID. And the reason for this will be made obvious to you in a little while. And finally, the name will be single and the component will also be single. Now, before we forget, we need to import this new single component from at slash components and single. Perfect. Everything compiles. Now, if we come back into the browser and we append slash story slash one to our URL, you should see that your new single component is rendering successfully in the browser. So why did we choose colon ID as the path here? Well, this will re represent the ID of the story that we wish to view, and it prevents us from having to hard code, say, story slash one in order to view story one, story slash two for story two, and so on. Instead, we can make this rather dynamic and have it automatically fetch the story from the Hacker News API and populate a single page with the values returned. Now that we've got this route defined, we now need to update our homepage component so that each story we retrieve links back to the appropriate story slash ID page within our application. So open up homepage.view and then up here where we have the p tag and story.data.url. We're going to want to wrap this in a router link component. So router link, and we want to give it a two, open quotes, open curly brackets, and we want to specify the path as slash story plus the story.data.id. And we'll just close this router link tag here. So what this basically means is that when we click on this link, it will navigate us to the route that we've just defined here. And it will also append the story ID for this particular story. Now, why are we using the router link component? Well, there's a couple of advantages, primarily the router link component effectively allows you to change your location within this single page application without making a new request for a new page. It effectively tells Vue that it wants to change location. Vue then picks this up and matches the location against an existing route and then displays the appropriate component assigned to that route. You could in theory do this with anchor tags. However, the router link component provides a couple of advantages that I outline in my Vue.js routing tutorial, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. 
If we now come back into our application, you should see that each of these URLs is now a link within our homepage. And if we click on that, it should go to story slash and the unique ID of that story. As you can see, however, there's not really a lot to look at. So let's go into our code editor and change that now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to define the data function for this component. So data function like so, give it space. And we want to return the story, which will be adjacent object and the comments, which will be an array for now. After our data function, we then want to specify our created function. So created function, again, give that a space. And within this, we want to call axios.get and we want to hit the Hacker News API. So hacker-news.firebase.io.com slash v0 slash item slash and then we want to append this dot root dot params dot id plus the dot json as well. Before we forget, we also want to import the Axios library. So import Axios from Axios. Now that we've done this, we want to handle the promise that is returned. So dot then capture the response and open a function this.story equals response.data this.story.comments equals a new array and this.story.kids.for each id returned we want to essentially call another api request so axios.get and funnel, funnily enough, it's going to be the same API that we have here to get the comments. And we want to append the ID and dot JSON once again. Again, we want to handle this. So response and this dot comments dot push response dot data like so. Finally, we want to catch both so dot catch and the error and we just want to simply console.log this error and we'll do that again for this one as well dot catch perfect and let's just quickly tidy up this bit of code so that it passes our ESLint rules and we can see everything has compiled successfully. So let's dissect what we've done here. Now within the created function, we basically make a request to the Hacker News API to get everything about the particular story that we're trying to load. Now we take this ID that we passed in here and we append it to the Hacker News API and then this returns all of the story information. So things like the title, the URL, the number of kids it has, which represent a comment ID. And once we have these comment IDs, we also then iterate over them and perform a subsequent API request to get the more fleshed out version of that comment, which includes the author name and all of the comments text. Once we have all of this comment information, we push it into our comments array like so. Now we can verify this all works by going into our Hacker News clone in the browser and then clicking the Inspect Element tab. If we then go to Network and click Refresh, you should see here that it primarily makes a call to the Hacker News API. Once the response for this is returned, it then iterates over all of the comments and tries to retrieve them all. So each of these API requests will represent a call to the Hacker News API to get a full version of the comment. Now, if I make this slightly bigger and I open up the response, I should be able to see the author of this comment, the ID of this, and the text associated with this comment. So now that we've successfully made all of the API requests we need, let's start by updating our template to start showing these comments. 
So the first thing we're going to do is add the class of container to our outside div. And we're then going to change my single root to story.title. And below this, we're going to add the score. So score is equal to story.score, like so. And below this again, we're going to do the story.url. Let's get rid of this trailing space, save that. And if we open up our browser, we should see our story is now printing out. Now that we've done that, let's try and print out our comments. So div, and we want this to repeat. So v4, comment, in comments. And we want the key to be the comment.id. And within this, we want to do div div class comment wrap and we then want to do a comment block with a p of comment text and we want to show the author and the time so div dot bottom con comment and div dot comment author comment dot by and duplicate that comment dot time so in the interest of time I am going to copy and paste the CSS that I have listed here steal that and I'm going to add it to the style scoped section like so and save that. Now, when we come back into our Hacker News clone, you should see that all of our top level comments are now printing out to the screen. And finally, I just want to make a couple of global style changes and I'm going to append these to the static slash style.css file. So copy and paste that, open up static, create a new style.css and paste that in. And then we're going to want to update our index.html and add a link to this style sheet like so. So static style.css and oops. save that and open up our browser once again. Refresh this and you'll see that our single component now looks a little bit nicer. So we've got it all centered and we can see our comments clearly. Now this project is starting to look a little bit more polished and a little bit closer to being finished. However, there's still a lot that can be improved upon. For instance, the way that we're rendering the text isn't quite right and neither is the way that we're rendering the date format down here. Also, we can't see any child comments underneath the top comments listed. Now, I'm going to leave these simple improvements up to you as an exercise to test your Vue.js knowledge. So that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. We managed to successfully create a new single.view component and extend our roots so that we can navigate to this component and view individual articles returned by the Hacker News API. Now, if you're enjoying the course so far, then we'd love to hear your feedback on Twitter at Elliot F. And I'm also open to any constructive critiques you may have with regards to not only this project, but anything on tutorialedge.net. Now, if you liked this tutorial, please leave a like. And if you loved it, please subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.